Okay, so in this um, tutorial, we're going to start looking at another component within uh, Android, and that would be the Seek Bar. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is I've got my app here, I've got my main activity, and when I first created the app, I've got all these red lines. Again, I'm just going to go to the uh, remove a conflict under libs here. All right, and uh, get rid of that. So if you see all those red lines, that'll that'll take care of it. That's just uh, dependency conflict and it, it'll indicate that down here two versions of Android support version part uh, version 4 jar are in the dependency list so you just get rid of the one up here in libs and everything works out fine um, okay so instead of breaking this particular application up into a main activity and a fragment I just wanted to show you the fragment was a separate class that can be referenced separately and I wanted you to work with some of the XML files it, it's set up to work here so we can just start working with our uh, fragment that we have here and the layout and the things that we're putting in it just right here in our main activity okay um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the fragment main.xml and I'm gonna grab right here this is a seek bar and I'm gonna drag it onto the screen like that all right and if we look at our fragment main.xml so what is a seek bar we take this button and you can drag it for different values okay uh, so under fragment main now we have a seek bar and we have our initial text view all right so the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna change the value of the text view based on the position of the seek bar okay all right so I'm gonna save that and I'm gonna save this all right uh, step one is let's create our text view and our seek bar uh, objects and use find view by ID to sort of link them up to the XML file all right so I'm gonna say text view TV and it's probably going to make me, you know, I bet you that's going to have to be final. Final text view TV. And then I'm going to say seek bar um, my seek. How's that? Okay. And let's link them up by saying, um, I could, you know, I could just do it all in one shot there. But I'm going to say TV equals uh, root view find view by ID r dot ID dot and it should autocomplete and if you type in T you should see text view one which is in our XML file if you saved the fragment main it'll, it'll show up that's the best way to do it is to use those dots and autocomplete and uh, let's go ahead and link up our seek bar object to our XML file root view dot find view by ID and again we're gonna go r dot ID dot and if I type in SEE, -E, there's our seek bar one. Okay, so we have two things we can work with. And again, in order to import all those red lines, I'm going to hit Control Shift O. And that is going to uh, bring up some imports uh, text view. And let's see what happened here. Okay, um, if I mouse over this, it's telling me it says add a cast to text view, and I forgot to do that. Uh, we've got this object here that exists in XML, but we do need to add a cast, this inside of parentheses. It acts like, a, think of it as multiplication. We're going to multiply the XML times text view to get a text view object. If you multiply a positive times a negative, you're always going to get a negative. That's kind of how I think about a cast. Uh, and this is going to be a, we're going to cast that XML seek bar 1 to a seek bar. Okay, and that would be a lowercase b. Let's see how I'm doing here. All right, so let's see what it says here. I wonder if seek bar, I probably need a capital B. Let's try that. There we go. All right, and so it's not seek bar, it is my seek, right? All right, and this is a capital B here as well. So actually going through and if you followed with me up to this point and you made all those mistakes going through and actually fixing those uh, it's a good thing that's a good thing because you know as you're going through and you're just typing in things instead of copying and pasting and I encourage copying and pasting as much as you can um, fixing errors like that is uh, is a good practice so alright uh, so now I've got a seek bar set up and I've got a text view set up let's um, let's go ahead and and implement our seek bar so that it, it changes the text view okay um, what I'm gonna do is 
you know, we're going to use um, a method called set uh, on seek bar change listener. Okay, and so this is the search term that you can use to grab um, the code that we need. So take a look at that set on seek bar change listener, and I'm going to go to Stack Overflow. And I'm going to find a guy here that says, wait a minute, what am I doing wrong? And I love Stack Overflow because uh, we're going to find someone, here we go, that has done it right here. And so here's our set seek bar on change listener. Okay? And within that, anytime you use the seek bar, anytime you touch the seek bar, anytime the seek bar is interacted with, we're overriding certain methods here, and all of these are called in one way or another, and we can utilize the information the seek bar is providing by putting code inside of you know certain places here. And this is kind of we'll be doing this over and over again with different types of uh, different types of uh, widgets. Okay, so I'm going to copy everything from the SK on seek bar change listener all the way down to the semicolon. All right, I'm going to copy it into my code here. All right, great. Um, now, our seek bar is not called SK, right? It's called my seek. All right. And uh, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and mouse over here, and we're going to import on seek bar change listener. We need to import that. All right. And that's going to take care of everything. Now, uh, we've got this little call down here inside of on progress change. That's what happens when you slide the seek bar back and forth. Uh, they're creating a what's called a toast, a little pop-up here, but we don't have a toast set up right now, so I'm going to delete everything inside of the method on progress changed. So this is where we're going to slide back and forth. Every time the, the seek bar has some kind of a change to it, uh, we can sort of pull that information and, and work with it. All right, so in this case, I'm just going to say tv.setText. All right, let's do this. Um, you can see that one of the integers there is progress that is um, an argument within this method. Okay, that's actually where the, uh, the seek bar is uh, or where the user has dragged it to is, is progress, right? So I'm going to set, I need to create an integer to hold that. So I'm going to say int uh, my progress equals progress. So I'm going to grab um, this integer here. And I'm going to load it into something. I could just use progress, I guess. Uh, and then I'm going to say tv.setText, and I'm going to use, it's an integer, so I'm going to take a string like that, and I'll, just, I'll go like this, progress value, okay, and then plus, and then my progress, all right? And so what this is going to do is, let's go ahead and run my seek bar, so I'm going to choose uh, run as Android application. All right, it's going to come up here inside of my AVD. I'm going to let this uh, rerun here. Here it is. Now it starts with hello world, right? Because the TV has that, uh, the text view has that set up in the XML file. But as I slide this, you can see progress value slides with the slider so you can see we can now extract information from that and use it to do things and provide the user with that little interface. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a red slider, a green slider, and a blue slider to uh, adjust the background color of the application based on where the user slides it. Okay, but the problem with that is right now is the, the progress value goes from zero, right, to 100. Now, if you're going to change RGB values, those go from 0 to 255, right? So there's a simple way we can handle that. Right underneath where we create myseek, I'm going to say myseek.setmax. All right, and that will set the maximum value of the seek bar, which is, okay, this seek bar will go up to 255 now, which uh, will allow us to do uh, red, green, and blue. All right, so I'm going to go um, run as Android application. Here we go. And now when I slide it, okay, you can see the maximum value is 255, all right, and you can slide that, all right. Now, here is your challenge. If you completed simple app, you have some code that sets the red, green, and blue values of the background color, right, if you're pressing a button and randomly changing the background. So uh, the goal here is, okay, we're, we've got one seek bar called my seek. I want you to create three seek bars, 
okay? Each one should have a text view associated with it that prints the value of the text bar for one. So that when I'm here, I've got, uh, you know, one seek bar, progress value, seek bar two with a little progress value, and seek bar three with a little progress value. So we've got three of them working. And then I want you to take it so that anytime you change any of the seek bars, all right, this one would represent red, the second one would represent green, the third one would represent blue. Those colors uh, will be, you know, that RGB value will be represented also by having the background color change. So if it's 25500, if I were to do this, that's red, right? Or if I were to take the second green, uh, the second seek bar and slide it all the way out, that would maximize the, the green value. This would, that would turn it green. Okay, so three seek bars, three progress values, modify the background color of the app. Good luck. Let me know if you need help.